While the title of first man to circumnavigate the globe is somewhat contested, the first woman to do so is not. Born Jean Barret to a farming family in 1740, not a lot is known about Barret's childhood and early life. It's speculated that she likely had an interest in plants from a young age and later became a herb woman with a wealth of knowledge of the healing properties of local flora. As a herb woman, she would have had the opportunity to dispense medical advice to the local villagers as well as teach scientists about the plants in the area a relatively common request at the time. Enter Philibert de Commerson, an aristocrat and scientist who was studying plants in the Loire Valley. This is where Barret was from. Perhaps it was her wit or looks, or perhaps Commerson was just incredibly into plants, but Jean Barret's next recorded employer was Commerson himself, who took her on as a housekeeper. We can't say definitively that their relationship was anything other than employer and employee. After all, Commerson was married, and no one in the 18th century ever had affairs. Right? But what we do know is that Beret became pregnant and gave birth in 1764 because the certificate of pregnancy required by French law at the time has survived the trials of time. Though Beret does not name the father of her child, the form was signed in a town 30 kilometers away from Beret's residence and witnessed by two men of relatively good standing. Not surprisingly, most historians think there's little doubt that Commerson was the father of the baby and arranged for the signing of the certificate. A short time later, Com Commerson and Beret, who changed her name to Jean de Bonnefoy, moved to Paris. Beret gave her son up to the Paris Foundlings Hospital, where he died at close to one years old. In that same year, Commerson was invited to join a royal expedition led by Louis Antoine de Bougainville. The expedition was set to be France's first circumnavigation of the globe, but it also aimed to collect plant and animal specimens in order to procure new flora and fauna that would adapt well to France and the French colonies. At first, Commerson hesitated. Not only was he often in poor health, requiring Barry's services as a nurse, among other things, but she was also the one who organized his papers and documented his collections. It is unknown how Barry came to be literate when it's likely her parents were not, but it's possible she was taught by a parish priest or even Commerson himself. The royal invitation did allow Commerson an assistant, paid for out of the government's pocket, but women were not allowed on navy ships at the time. Then the idea was hatched. Barre would join the expedition dressed as a man. For the most part, she was successful in hiding her gender. Several factors contributed to her effective masquerade. First, she joined the expedition just as the ship was set to sail in 1766. Commerson kept saying that he hadn't found the right person to be his assistant and simply took on a young man who presented himself at the dockside. Second, Commerson carried so much equipment with him that the ship's captain gave up his cabin to make room for Commerson, his assistants, and all of the equipment. The cabin offered privacy that the rest of the ship did not, including private toilet facilities. Thirdly, Francois Vive, the ship's surgeon, kept a journal in which he told of his suspicions that Beret was a woman. However, he said when she was confronted by members of the crew, she told everyone that she was a eunuch and that way laid any other questions for a time, presumably as at that point the crew were probably too busy cringing and holding their hands protectively around their nether regions. Thus, for a while, the couple were able to dodge suspicion and Jean Beret's accomplishments likely overshadowed any oddities that she displayed. For example, she is thought to have discovered many new plants, including one called Bourguenvier, ultimately named after the leader of the expedition. As for why it was she and not Commerson, it turns out that Commerson's worries about his own health were well founded. He had trouble with his leg at the time that Bourguenvier was found around Rio de Janeiro and was not able to do much walking. Thus, it was Beret who tramped through the rainforest and brought back most of the samples, as well as documented her own discoveries. Unfortunately, it's difficult to live in close quarters with a large group of men without them noticing odd patterns of behavior. It was noted that Beret never used the public open-air toilet. She was smaller in size than the rest of the men. Her disguise was also difficult to maintain, and as previously noted with the whole eunuch thing, rumors had been circulating on the ship about her true sex for some time. There are many different accounts of how she was discovered, but most agree that it happens when the ship landed in Tahiti in 1770. 68. Bougainville himself reported that a group of Tahitans surrounded Beret and exclaimed that she was a woman and Beret had to be ushered back onto the ship in order to avoid a conflict. Other accounts don't match up, however, with some saying that the Tahitians revealed her sex in a more brutal manner. Other journals said that she was not revealed on Tahiti but on New Ireland and it was the crew who did the revealing. 
Whatever the case, Beret and Commissant did not continue on with the atoll after their masquerade was discovered. They disembarked at Mauritius, much to the relief of Bougainville, who did not want to deal with having a woman illegally on board his naval ship. The pair later traveled to Madagascar to document the plants there, discovering a plant named after Beret, the Beretia bonafidia. Unfortunately, the plant had already been discovered and named by the time Commissant Sample made it back to Paris. Only one plant from the expedition honors Beret, the Solanum beretii, while over 70 species honor Commissant. Commissar ended up dying on Mauritius, leaving Beret with a lot of preserved plants and records and little means of returning home to France. She found work on the island and married a French officer named Jean de Bonnard. Then, around 1775, Jean Beret returned to France with her husband and plant specimens in tow. The plants were turned over to the government, and Beret was later granted a pension for her service to the expedition. Morganville reportedly said that her behavior was exemplary aboard the ship. She was modest and hardworking. The pension honored her great courage on the expedition, despite the fact that she had disguised herself as a man. With her return to France, Jean Beret completed her circumnavigation of the globe, becoming the first woman to accomplish such a feat. Set up comfortably by the pension from the government, she died in 1807 at the age of 67. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy another channel I do called Geographics, which is all about, well, geography. Probably could have guessed that one. I'm going to link to it below. And thank you for watching.